Previously, this elder abbot was surprised when Zhou Wei used the sword consolidation. The innermost secret of swordsmanship is a mere torch. Besides, to endure such a prolonged period of it without any apparent effort. So this elder abbot asked if that was a sign of an unfathomable realm master. Moreover, according to him, originating enhanced Kai and sustaining it are two different levels. It was literally impossible to originate and sustain enhanced Kai so easily without reaching the martial soul stage. Furthermore, Zhou Wei introduced himself as the Namgun clan's representative. Given the widespread rumor that the Namgun clan's headmaster of the Azure Heaven's ancient discourse hall has attained the heavenly eye. Their recent force was already far from usual, and another unfathomable martial artist had also joined the ranks. So as per this elder abbot, the Namgun clan was going to quilt the world. TL, Azure Heaven's ancient discourse hall was translated by the previous team as the Great Hall. On the contrary, Zhou Wei was suddenly shocked, so this elder abbot asked him if there was something he recognized. However, at the back of Baim Siang's head, undercover monks from the lowered yard had studied the marks left by the demon god for a long time yet failed to yield any results. Nonetheless, Zhou Wei said no. Then he asked them what exactly they expected him to see. In addition to Zhou Wei, that wasn't helpful at all. Nothing but some scribbles filled with passion or inscribed marks, mostly cut by sword. Surprisingly, Baim Xiong said that the healing power their benefactor was seeking was one of the demon god's abilities. After that, he said that he knows no more. So Zhou Wei seems interested in what the monk said. At the present time, Zhou Wei wondered what utter nonsense was that again. He also wondered if that meant the story of immersing oneself in the mysterious dirt of that valley for complete healing was all a fib. So Zhou Wei asked Baim Xiong if he was saying it was his own self-healing ability. Right away, Baim Xiong said that he did. In addition to him, the demon god's inexplicable healing power was an undeniable truth witnessed by all the undercover monks of that time. Nevertheless, in Zhou Wei's mind, even at that moment, Zhang El Rayong was dying in agony from the extreme cold. If only he could find some clues about the demon god's healing power. But Zhou Wei didn't even finish what he was thinking, when he was suddenly stunned. According to him, that was clearly not scribbling but some sort of sketch. Ah, this hurts just like soul transfer. And where am I? Shockingly stated by Zhou Wei. And unexpectedly, Zhou Wei saw some pictures of pornography on the wall. So he was really puzzled at this moment. Meanwhile, as per Zhou Wei, his face felt like it was on fire. Even if he tried, he simply couldn't tear his eyes away from those perfect proportions and beautiful curves. Despite clearly portraying a woman's body, it was neither vulgar or obscene, with astounding attention to detail. Furthermore, without persistent dedication and the transcendent mindset of a master craftsman, the completion of such a painting would be beyond reach. It was astonishing how devoted descriptions like those emerged from mere sword marks. Nonetheless, in the modern era, the demon god would have been an excellent adult webtoon artist. Ah, uh, where the hell? What are they saying again? Other venerable? No way. As stated by the people inside the righteous heavenly blood jade. So Zhou Wei was startled because according to him, those definitely weren't the voices of the Zhou clan's elders. But in addition to him, what they were referring to at that moment was none other than other venerables. So Zhou Wei wondered if his ancestors were still there. On the other hand, this ghost on the left asked his colleagues if Zhou Wei heard them. However, this ghost on the right also asked if that was even possible. In addition to him, a miracle on par with the dawn of time, Tiwahaha, finally got in touch with the chaotic world of heavenly jade. At long last, connected, as stated by this demon god. So Zhou Wei was puzzled after he heard the word chaotic world heavenly jade because according to him, perhaps that term refers specifically to the righteous heavenly blood jade. But Zhou Wei wondered what on earth was the identity of that necklace that had those different names. Nevertheless, it was called the righteous heavenly blood jade by the Zhou clan's elders, the sacred fire demonic jade by the cultists of the heavenly demonic cult, and at that moment, it was some chaotic world heavenly jade. So this demon god explained to Zhou Wei that he clearly didn't indicate it with so many words. A connected one with the soul frame of the venerable would appear in a flash of the living, as the demon god said. So as per Zhou Wei, as he looks at the unfolding situation, it seems that the venerables, who were trapped in the demon god's chaotic world heavenly jade, had also squeezed into the righteous heavenly blood jade. So he wondered what kind of motel his necklace was. In an instant, the demon god asked Zhou Wei what the motel was. On the other hand, according to this ghost on the left, the world in Zhou Wei's memory seems a bit strange. Moreover, this ghost on the right asked if Zhou Wei was not from the central plains. However, Zhou Wei told them that first of all, he asked them if his ancestors were there. Straight away, this demon god said yes, and according to him, they were all bound by a powerful steel. 
In addition to him, their soul frames were sealed without exception. So as per Joe Y, it was truly fortunate that the entities of his ancestors haven't disappeared. But he still wondered who those elders were. Then this demon god immediately said that they were the Doc Go clan. In the meantime, Joe Y wondered if the demon god was referring to the extinct Doc Go great clan from ages ago. But as per Joe Y, it has been wiped out for too long, and there wasn't much information left about them. One thing for sure was that their clan used to be affiliated with the Orthodox sects. However, Joe Y wondered how the demon god could, but he didn't even finish his question, because according to him, that was not important right at that moment. Then Joe Y asked the demon god if it was true that he had mastered a technique to recover a person. It seems you're asking about the natural regeneration technique of Elder Tian Yuzi, as stated by this demon god. Then he asked Zhou Wai about the technique of that Tao. Out of the blue, Zhou Wai suddenly asked Baim Xiong how they could get out there at that moment. But Baim Xiong said that it was a bit complicated. To begin with, they had to pass through the Severing Formation exit. Meanwhile, the life gate of the Severing Formation won't open until midnight, when the Moonshadow energy fills it completely. And even if one were to pass through the exit, there was the demon perished in a void cave with plentiful mechanisms waiting, which only the lower yards undercover monks can solve. However, Joe Wai was confused as to why they complicate things. After that, he suddenly jumped off, and he rode on his sword. Then Joe Wai told the monks that they had helped him a lot, but he also told them that he would get going. So these monks were both astounded after they saw the flying sword of Joe Wai. On the other hand, before Joe Wai left the area, he told the monks that if their karmas were intertwined, they would meet again. Amitabha, the divine dragon has indeed appeared in Jiang Hu, as stated by this old monk. In accordance with Baim Xiong, that benefactor's cultivation base was like that of a legendary sword god. Nevertheless, at the back of this elder abbot's head, it just oddly feels like some crucial jewel of Shaolin has been stolen. On top of that, even though Zhou Wai visited under the Namgun clan name, they weren't given a single silver coin. So this elder abbot wondered if he had ever experienced such dukkha caused by a single human being. Meanwhile, at the Eight Gates Celestial Soul Sealing Marvelous Formation, truly amazing. That's my elder brother, as stated by Eagle Woon. And according to him, there were secret techniques scattered throughout the formation that he couldn't even imagine in his realm. An unwavering illusion technique that induces various phantoms upon intruders. Due to the technique that causes infinite changes at predetermined times, even he, who was familiar with the formation, couldn't detect the life gate. On the spur of the moment, this thing suddenly shook. So as per Eagle Woon, that undoubtedly signals that intruders had entered the formation. And not just one or two, but a group. So he needed to enforce the phantom formation more. But all of a sudden, a person stopped Eagle Woon and said that they were martial masters from the Namgoon clan. So in Eagle Woon's head, the person was able to retrieve the phantom's subtleties so quickly. So he was seriously lacking. Moreover, just hearing one footstep was enough to feel strict discipline and regulation. At this point, the patriarch of the Namgung clan appeared on the scene. Instantaneously, Eagle Woon greeted him. Ho ho, I'm pleased. Today, my eyes are being treated, as stated by Namgung Su. Furthermore, Namgung Su never expected to behold the Eight Gates Celestial Soul Sealing Marvelous Formation of an ancient severing type the Eagle clan takes pride in. On the other hand, Namgung Jang Ho suddenly arrived at the scene. Then he instantly thanked his father for taking the trouble of coming such a long way. However, Namgung Su asked him if there were any difficulties in life outside the clan. So Jang Ho just smiled. But in his mind, there was a whole lot. In fact, he didn't even really know why he was going through those unnecessary hardships. All of a sudden, Eagle Woon's brother, Eagle Yoon barged in and immediately greeted the patriarch. So Namgung Su said that he was lost for words, considering the well-grounded skill required to create that formation. And now the Eagle Clan's inner court master has shown himself. But Eagle Woon told him that he flattered him. However, he asked him if it was correct that all the troops of the Namgung clan were there. Moreover, Eagle Yoon also said that while he was yet to confirm the details, it seems there were others who had entered the formation. Straight away, Namgung Su said that it was the Heavenly Dragon Battle Armed Unit from the Alliance. So Eagle Woon was really shocked by what he heard. According to him, they were resolute. Then it was worth trying. On the spur of the moment, Zhou Wai suddenly arrived. Then he immediately ordered them to bring a live chicken, garlic, and seasoned sweet rice. Moreover, he told them to remember that they had to save Jang El Ryong. A few minutes later, in Zhou Wai's mind, a live chicken, garlic, and sweet rice. For anyone from the Republic of Korea, those were the ingredients for ginseng chicken soup. In addition to Zhou Wai, though they were not the most fitting for the grandiose natural regeneration technique, 
he still favors their ease of acquisition. Big Brother Il Rayong, Yu Hua, worriedly stated by Nam Gung So So. Then she suddenly cried. So Nam Gung Su comforted her. However, Jan Ho hates what he sees. He even wondered why his bright and beautiful sister went for that muscle head fat ass. Out of the blue, Han Xiao Yun interrupted them and said that they had gathered everything. Hey, you, as stated by Nam Gung So So. But Zhou Wai stopped her. Then he ordered her to be quiet and move aside. Subsequently, Zhou Wai told the elder in his necklace to hurry. He also begs him to take over his body and examine that young man's hands. On the contrary, this elder asked as to why he should. So Zhou Wai was shocked and he got angry while asking the elder how could he say that at that moment. However, this elder replied and said, Boy, when did this Tao promise to possess you? I've never said such a thing. So Zhou Wai replied and told him that he was not wrong. But he asked him if it wasn't even more absurd to unfold the natural regeneration technique after hearing about it once, even with all those explanations. Furthermore, Zhou Wai said that he naturally thought the elder would help him by possessing his body. As a result, this elder got enraged and called Zhou Wai a stupid brat. Then he asked him if he was completely insane. He also angrily told him how dare he ask that spiritualized venerable to host a growing body. Moreover, he asked him if he had any idea how dangerous that action was. According to Zhou Wai, based on what he had heard, it causes a gradual depletion of the elder's spiritual energy. And this elder agreed with him. He even said that Zhou Wai truly had a decent understanding. However, he asked him if he knew what happens when one's spiritual energy is depleted. But Zhou Wai was speechless, so the elder asked him if he had forgotten how to speak. In addition to the elder, as Zhou Wai said, the more spiritual energies expended, the smaller the soul frame becomes. And what then? The very existence of the soul itself could be extinguished. So this elder asked Zhou Wai if he realized how cruel that would be to a person. Nevertheless, according to Zhou Wai, he foolishly begged his ancestors to resort to possession. They always listened with a smile. However, his top priority at that moment is to address Jiang El Rayong's condition. So he told the elder that he totally got him. Patience, please. If you listen to this Tao's request, the story may change again. Where are your manners to not hear others out? As stated by this elder. So Zhou Wai asked him what his request was. As per this elder, seeing the original mysterious lady of the Nine Heavens Sutra was his unfulfilled wish. So he asked Zhou Wai if he could possibly find it and show it to him. However, Zhou Wai asked him if the mysterious lady of the Nine Heavens Sutra wasn't the book a legendary Taoist scripture, obscure even in its existence and sought after by all Taoists with great fervor, a deity that appears in myths and legends, that was who the mysterious lady of the Nine Heavens was. Then Zhou Wai asked how he could find the sutra left behind by such a being itself. Moreover, he asked the old man what kind of request it was. Then he said that to make a promise, he had to know if he could keep it. Furthermore, he asked him by what means he could find something that so many Taoists couldn't. So this elder replied and said that he had collected some clues throughout his life. In addition to him, with the use of that information, it may not be impossible after all. However, according to Zhou Wai, he had a lot on his plate to devote his lifetime to the elder's wish. But he asked him if that wasn't too much to ask. Right away, this elder also asked him if he was taking him for a heartless old man of no conscience. Then he said that he only asked for enough time so as not to be an obstacle to Zhou Wai's journey. All right, negotiation settled. As stated by Zhou Wai, then he told the old man to not forget his promise. All of a sudden, the spirit of the old man entered Zhou Wai's body. However, according to him, vitality was coursing through his whole body, and the five senses felt alive with countless sensations. Then, he wondered how long it had been since he experienced being in a human body. As fast as Lu Ling, Nu Wu and Tai Hao ascended to the heavens, with respect, await their presence. May they express a boundless mind, as stated by the elder inside Zhou Wai's body. Then surprisingly, the chicken garlic and seasoned sweet rice gradually disappeared and float into the air. So people around Zhou Wai were all shocked by what they witnessed. As per Jian Ho, Zhou Wai devoured Hefei, and Jiang Zai is a wealthy merchant. Occasionally, he reveals the aspect of an artist, acts like a philosopher who has bested numerous scholars, is an esteemed calligraphist, not to mention a crazy unfathomable martial artist. And at that moment, Zhou Wai even made it to the technique of Taoists. So Jiang Ho wondered if Zhou Wai was really human. Oh, dear heavens, shockingly stated by Patriarch Nam Gung Su. On the spur of the moment, the ice covering Jang El Ryong's hands was suddenly destroyed, and in the blinking of an eye, Jang El Ryong's hands healed as if they were new. So the people in that area were all dumbfounded by what they saw. According to Nam Gung Su, it was a new flesh. However, as per Jin Gahui, it was such soft and pristine, 
ladylike hands for that rowdy man. On the contrary, even Jang El Ryong was flabbergasted after he saw his new hands. Then he spoke and shockingly said, I thought I was going to kick the bucket. But he didn't even finish his words when he asked if that was for real. Out of the blue, Jang El Ryong suddenly kneeled in front of Zhou Wai. Then he immediately thanked his big brother. In the meantime, Nam Dung Su asked Zhou Wai when on earth he learned the immortal Tao's technique. But Zhou Wai just smirks. Nevertheless, at the back of Nam Dung Su's head, it has been less than a year since Zhou Wai reached the entrance of the unfathomable realm. But at that moment, he was in the boundlessness stage that could soar with the flying sword and had even mastered the technique to restore a person's hands. In addition to him, each encounter with Zhou Wai leaves him feeling increasingly foolish. Let's get going now. We gotta kill those dark heaven packers, furiously stated by Zhou Wai. So Nam Dung Su instantly agreed with him. Then he said that he would ensure they learn firsthand why Nam Dung was renowned as the Eastern Heaven's sovereign clan. On the other side, Jang El Ryong angrily said that the whip ash hole was his. A few hours later, according to Nam Dung Su, while people of Jiang Hu tend to tacitly belittle merchants, on that day, he had come to a painful realization of how wrong his values were. Experiencing the power and expertise of the Zhou clan's chamber of commerce, now a hyperscale business establishment in Jiang Hu, was like entering a different dimension. In addition to Nam Dung Su, with the Sovereign Corps under his direct command, alongside the Green and Sun Dragon squads representing the Inner Court, and including every sword expert from the Nam Dung clan currently stationed at the Poyang Lake, their total number stands at 300. Moreover, Representative Zhou Wai has outfitted all the sword experts with those expensive dragon scale armor. What kind of armor was it? A handful of fine steel, meticulously refined and encased in costly kiko, further enhances its durability, resulting in what was known as the dragon scale. Named after the scales of a dragon, it boasts tremendous solidity and durability, so it goes without saying that craftsmen capable of refining such armor were exceedingly rare. TL, Kiko is Japanese tortoise armor. Furthermore, the costly iron bracers and ox armor gaiters protect the forearms and shins of all the Namgung sword experts. Meanwhile, their belts were stocked with high-quality dry rations, various auxiliary weapons, First aid medicine, including metal wound medication, flares, smoke, bombs, small sharpening molds for maintaining the blades, and more. Rather than just the martial artists of a martial clan, Nam Gung Su wondered if aren't they were more like an imperial army. Nevertheless, the amount of money was certainly enormous. Quality equipment and supplies always boost the morale of a battle group. However, Nam Gung Su asked Zhou Wai if there wasn't too much discrimination against the Heavenly Dragon Battle Armed Unit. Oh dear, do you still now understand my intentions? As stated by Zhou Wai. In addition to him, with the Jiang Hu, wide rumors about such quality arms and supplies received by becoming a martial artist of the Nam Gung clan, Zhou Wai asked him where he thought renowned martial masters would be drawn. Moreover, Zhou Wai said that the Heavenly Dragon Battle Armed Unit would get the word out very well. So he told him to just trust and follow him. However, Nam Gung Su wondered who would ever use differential supply distribution as a means of enhancing the Nam Gung clan's reputation when crossing that tense threshold to the decisive battle against the Dark Heaven Association. Meanwhile, Zhou Wai said that they would go to the Dark Heaven Association's headquarters. So Nam Gung Su told him to not worry about the big barn because according to him, they would have it fallen in half a day and head over to assist Zhou Wai. But Zhou Wai just laughed and said that he expected their side to be faster. A few hours later, at the big barn, Nam Dung Su together with his men arrived at the place. So some of the armies of the Dark Heaven Association were horrified by what they saw. At this moment, Nam Dung Su ordered the warriors of Great Nam Dung to wage the war. Murder them all, not get killed themselves. Meanwhile, at the Dark Heaven Association's headquarters, Young Master Eagle, Ho Ho, no, should I call you a military advisor? Anyway, I've organized the ranks as you instructed, as stated by this old man in the front. So Eagle Woon immediately thanked him. Nonetheless, in accordance with Yi Gale Woon, the enemy's numbers reached 8,000, while their camp was limited to only hundreds. Even though their martial masters were undoubtedly of superior quality, they anticipated significant casualties in a full-scale battle. So as per Eagle Woon, first, his elder brother and he would set up a formation there. In addition to him, if any of their comrades became unable to fight, he asked them to immediately retrieve them and jump into it. Then he said that they should be able to hold out for at least four hours and provide first aid. Eagle Woon also said that minimizing casualties was the key to that battle. Instantaneously, this man on the left said that he understood while this man on the right said that they would do so. Meanwhile, according to Eagle Woon, it appears most effective to select only peak martial artists, 
and stronger to infiltrate there. Route-wise, successfully making their way through, they would secure the shortest access road directly to the inner court. Thus, they could quickly penetrate the enemy's heart and cause confusion. In an instant, this man said that he would prepare the sword experts from his squad. All of a sudden, this man angrily said that he would also prepare the sword experts from his squad. However, as per this guy, it looks to him that their side has the most martial masters. Nevertheless, Eagle Woon ordered them to prepare the Heavenly Dragon Battle Armed Unit for a group battle, with the Namgung Clan leading the charge. In addition to him, now that the unfathomable headmaster of the Azure Heaven's ancient discourse hall was stepping forward, it was ideal to put the Namgung Clan in the vanguard. Copy that, as stated by this man. Out of the blue, Jang Elryong suddenly sneezed, right away. Jang Ho said that he told him to rest more, but Jang Elryong asked him what he was talking about because according to him, as Chief Jang, he couldn't drop out when it was a life and death matter for the Zhou clan's chamber of commerce. Sniff, and what's that smell? I'm starving to death, and the constant aroma of roasted chicken isn't helping, you know. Is it just me, or? As stated by Jang Elryong, so Jang Ho asked what nonsense that was out of the blue. Then he told him to focus on their meeting. On the spur of the moment, Zhou Wai suddenly appeared on the scene. So Jang Elryong immediately asked him about what that was. Straight away, Zhou Wai replied and said that that was the dark serpentine barrel gun. As a result, these men were shocked by what they heard. This man in blue even asked if Zhou Wai said dark serpentine barrel gun. Moreover, this man in red asked if that wasn't the Tang clan's hidden weapons. On the other hand, Eagle Woon wondered if Zhou Wai would make a return journey to see Chuan in such a short time. Besides, he also wondered if the dark serpentine barrel gun wasn't the ancient hidden weapon that represents the Tang clan itself. Heha, <laughs> the Tang clan never forgets gratitude or resentment. Anyway, here it is, as stated by Zhou Wai. Then he said that he once attempted to handle that, and the rebound was tremendous, so he told them to prioritize supplying them to the heavenly sword experts. But this man got enraged while asking Zhou Wai if that was something exclusively for the Namgun clan again. In addition to him, that was over the line. He also said that if all the supplies were completely monopolized by them, he asked how on earth he was supposed to maintain the morale of his men. So Zhou Wai told him that it was up to the alliance to care about its matters. After that, Zhou Wai approached to ride his sword again. Then he told them that they were just going to clean up the remnants anyway, so he asked them why all the fuss. Subsequently, Zhou Wai ordered the master, his elder brother Namgung, Chief Jang Elryong and manager Han Xiao Yun to wait at the main gate after arranging the martial artists armed with the dark serpentine barrel gun in the vanguard. But this old man asked Zhou Wai about what that meant. So Zhou Wai said that it meant to block the entrance, the entrance blockage. Then Zhou Wai asked him if he didn't understand. Surprisingly, Jiang Elryan said no. Then he asked Zhou Wai if he could make it more clear. He also asked what they should do after blocking the entrance. But Zhou Wai told them that they were only supposed to do that because he didn't want anyone to get hurt. After that, Zhou Wai flies away and headed directly to the main gate of the castle. Without warning, Zhou Wai suddenly raised his sword as if he were to attack the enemies. On the other hand, this old man was startled after he saw the gigantic power of Zhou Wai. Dai, furiously stated by Zhou Wai. And in the twinkling of an eye, Zhou Wai managed to destroy the main gate of the Dark Heaven Association. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you wish to have another part of this recap, please give us at least 1000 likes and don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Until next time.